example, going up a hill. So the car has to add gas to keep that car at 60 miles an hour, 60, 70 miles an hour. So this is our process. This would be our car. And we have a controller that determines the output, how much gas is going to go into that engine. That's what's really being controlled. Okay, in order to keep, and it tests it back and finds that the, this, the, um, the car is going 70 or it's going 72 because it's going down a hill. Okay, so then it's going to adjust and re-fix um, the, the amount of gas going in until we can maintain our speed at 70. Okay. So in our process, it's the exact same concept. We have feedback control on some of our input variables, and some of our other input variables we must manually control because we do not have an automatic control for them. And what happens when we try to do an automatic control? Well, there's our control model is managing to keep our process. Um, how, how do we? Res how does our? How does our controller respond to a process? Um, disturbance, such as uh, coming to a hill. Okay, when you come to a hill, you don't want the car to slow down for five minutes before it finally decides that it's going to put more gas in the system. You want it to react fast, and yet you don't want it to turn on a ton of gas. You want it to just put in some gas so that you go up the hill and uh, you know keep the, the car at the same speed. So this shows you examples of of an underdamped system. Okay, uh, the underdamped system is here where we, we get an oscillation. Okay, critically damped means that you're going to have some overshoot as a, in a response to the system, but then it's going to level off to the desired um, set point uh, process response. And overdamped actually it just it's too sensitive and it just can't control anything at all. It just kind of stops the whole process. Okay, so that's um, the case where you have a process disturbance. Another case could be where you change the set point, where you want to change the set point for a different reason. You might have, um, you need to, to slow down because the speed limit has changed. So you slow down the car, change the set point, and then how does the car respond to the change of set point? Well, here is the new, this is a similar situation where we have the, the um, under damp where you're going to get an oscillation and a critically damp where it will overshoot a little bit, but then it will level off. So this is kind of the terminology and the, the basic, basic concepts of process control. And now let's apply it into to bioprocesses. This is a standard, um, uh, the, the concept of standard feedback controllers. Typically, these fall under the category of proportional controller, proportional and integral controller, and then proportional, integral, and derivative controller. I'm not going to go into the details of this now. You're going to learn that in your process control class. Uh, Typically, PI control is is effective in processes that are not um, very sensitive. So this is going to be um, what is used a lot of times. Our bioreactor comes with the following uh, variables controlled, and that would be temperature and pH. You don't need to worry about those. You just tell it what value, what, what temperature you want to run it at. Tell it what pH you want to have it at, and it's going to control it. All right, we're going to talk actually a little bit more about these two. But um, now dissolved oxygen, unfortunately, our bioreactor does not control the dissolved oxygen, but it um, we can manually adjust the. Um, and I'll talk about talk about what we're going to do to adjust what we're going to adjust to keep our dissolved oxygen at the value that we want.
uh, the CO2 probe or the glucose sensor in our process, but we have an offline glucose monitor, which is fine for our purposes, and we don't need CO2 because, in fact, that's more useful for mammalian cells. Right. But we do have a scale to measure the fermenter volume as the process continues. Okay. Um, fermentation is a very non-linear process. The things that go on inside the bioreactor are uh, sensitive to a number of different parameters, and the growth is very uh, particular. It's, it's, um, we're not dealing here with a, a chemical reaction that is, you know, um, where it really does the same thing every time. These bacteria are alive, and you know, it's not to say that they have a personality, but sometimes it seems like that. So, in fact, the type of control that we need to use is is very um, sophisticated. Okay. So we use this standard temperature, we use standard control for the temperature. Uh, the pH is actually a very sophisticated control model that is designed for pH control in solutions, and it doesn't. There are there is very little offset, partly due to the fact that we have a buffer in our media, but it, it's a very good pH um, uh, mechanism in the system for controlling the pH. The DO will be managed by something called cascade control. In other words, there's two ways of influencing the concentration of oxygen, and the system will use one, and then another, and then another, and then another. Um, and then we also have these uh, things that we're going to measure, but we are not going to use hardware sensors. Okay, so let's start with our discussion of the different um, variables with oxygen. So oxygen, as we've already seen, is a very important um, variable in the process for aerobic culture. And if it were a strict aerobe, it would die without enough oxygen present in the system. But if, if it's a fat, what's called a facultative aerobe, that means it can grow either with oxygen or it can grow anaerobically. And uh, in that case, it's not going to die in the absence of oxygen, but it will produce byproducts. And we will monitor our dissolved oxygen by using a dissolved oxygen probe. And the oxygen is fed as a gas. You have to keep in mind, and you had this class on mass transfer last semester, that oxygen is fed as a gas, but it's only utilized in the liquid phase.